What's up everyone? Today we are in the growth space and I just wanted to share with you guys one of our favorite lazy ways of growing some plants and that would be this flood and drain system right here. Now this is something that we recently added into our growth space so that way we could grow my edible flowers, a few herbs, and also some crops like some kales and collards like you can see over here because they are now falling over into our growth space which means today is also harvest day. But before I talk a little bit about that, I wanted to share a little bit about the system. Now this system is something that is super easy for basically anyone. The hardest part really about it is getting it set up but even that really isn't that difficult. Um, once you have it all set up, you have your timer set where the lights come on and off on their own. Another thing that you're going to have is your reservoir, which we have down here. And that's just a simple little container that you can buy at a Lowe's or any other home improvement store. Um, but we just use this as our reservoir, which we fill up with water. Uh, we use nutrients in it. Right now, this one has Maxi Grow in it. Sometimes we also like to use Master Blend, which I personally love more than Maxi Grow. Sorry, <laughs> but we didn't have any of that at the moment. But all you have to do is really maintain this reservoir here and as long as you keep up with that your plants are going to look nice and happy and abundant like these over here so what plants do we have in here there's quite a few varieties going on especially in the basil realm i think i have about three or four different types of basil in this system alone and that would be forgive me if i mess up on some of these but um, i believe i have cinnamon basil which i think is over that one which it has a nice cinnamon aroma whenever you break the leaf a little bit um i have some lemon basil oh and that's it kicking on you want to see it real quick yes so here i'm going to pick this up so a flood and drain system basically these little trays right here just kind of fill up with water and it will only come up to a certain set point and it will fill these trays enough where the roots and also these little rock wall cubes in there can get wet and it'll do that for i believe 15 minutes um three times a day four four times a day um but it'll do it in 15 min minute increments and after those 15 minutes are up it just redrains itself back into the reservoir again and it just continues that process multiple times throughout the day and then that's enough to keep these guys nice and happy <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about some of the plants that i have in this growth system right now starting over here on this side if you notice this, there are a few different varieties of basil from the front to the back. Each one has their own kind of look to them and also their own aroma and flavor. These ones are Genovese. This is more of like an opal purple basil. Then I got lemon and a uh, cinnamon basil at the back there. Next up to that is one of my favorite plants recently because it is soup season. And with soup season, I really like to make a lot of beef stews. And I've been using shiso in that a ton. Now this particular variety is definitely my favorite out of all the shisos, and that's the shiso Britain. And if you turn it over, I don't know if you can see it, um, the back sides of the leaves are a nice deep purple, and then the front sides are a very beautiful dark green. Now in some cultures, they'll actually take these leaves and use them as uh, wraps, so kind of like a lettuce wrap. Um, I haven't done that yet, but I definitely have that on my bucket list. But for now, this is one of my favorites for my soup. Next up to that, I have a few kales and collards, which we're going to be harvesting those today. So that way we can saute them a little bit. And if you look at this, look at how big that leaf is. And my favorite part too about hydroponically grown uh, collards is you really get to see that veining within the leaves of the plant. And it is just really pretty. I'm gonna try to get up to the light. And I feel like you kind of see that with ones grown outside, but I feel like you see it more with hydroponic ones. Also mixed into my collard section, I do have some of this dino kale here, which is looking gorgeous, has a nice and beautiful blue tone to it, and also is very much ready for harvest at this point. And then leading over here, there's a few more basil varieties. And then up top, I got some strawberries. Now, the reason why I'm growing these strawberries is because... Because why not? This particular variety, um, I'll have to try to remember the name of it and we'll write it out. But this particular variety has a beautiful edible flower on it that's supposed to taste slightly like strawberry and that really intrigued me so i'm trying to grow these in the system it is a little bit different because they are much longer plant and they're reaching out so i don't know how long i'm gonna keep them in here but i still started them in here and they're looking beautiful next to that i got a few violas these are that fun sizzle frizzle sizzle frizzle and it's really fun to say um and the colors on them are looking great they're just now starting to bloom 
And then I think behind this, I can't remember what variety that is. I feel like that's another viola. I'll find out soon once they do start to bloom which one I planted because I planted so many I forgot. <laughs> and then next up, I actually have some marigolds, which I'm going to pull my sleeve up. These have a beautiful aroma to them. It's nice and sweet and floral and just really funky fun. Plus, if you touch these leaves, it's very fruity. Um, and then last but not least, I have an edible sunflower, which it got really tall. It does not belong in here. I'm actually going to take that out and put it in my outdoor garden where you can actually take plants from this system and move them into soil and they will grow perfectly fine, at least with the sunflowers. Now, I already had a few more sunflowers just like this one in here, but I took them outside and I planted them in soil to see if they'd grow and they took perfectly. In fact, right now they all are getting their blooms and it looks so pretty, but this one's definitely going to be joining them today because it's bending over. It doesn't need to be in there anymore. So as you can tell just by all the plants I just listed, you can plant quite a few different varieties in a system like this and they'll grow perfectly fine as long as you manage them. You really wanna make sure you keep up with the water. You wanna make sure that plants like this aren't blocking lights to the other ones. If they are, you do either want to remove them or cut their leaves. Now, if you guys have been keeping up with our social media posts, you may have noticed me talking a little bit about how many times we've harvested from this and seen how much we do get from this. We usually harvest this every one to two weeks, depending on what it's looking like. And we get about a pound from this bottom shelf down here every single time so far, which is really awesome. It's a very abundant harvest and it continues to produce. <laughs> like this, we're about to dive into this because it is definitely time. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about harvesting. So I got my pair of scissors here, got my sleeves nice and rolled up, and I'm just gonna go for the lowest node that I can. Now right here you can see that there's two little leaves starting. So that means those are gonna end up stretching out like these guys are here. So I'm just gonna go ahead flip off these two and that's our first harvester which is quite a bit <laughs> it's bigger than my hand i'm just going to place it onto our scale tray now something else i'm going to do too for this one is see how big these leaves are and they're kind of just getting in the way i'm just going to go ahead and trim those off too and now by keeping it at this height and trimming it shorter, this will encourage the plant to actually stay shorter so that way we're not getting these super tall plants that are just putting stuff out everywhere. We want them to stay nice and short because it makes it a lot easier to manage the system. Now this one's pretty good, so I'm only going to trim off these little leaves. All right, so with this one, I'm going to cut off these tops because we're getting some new growth down there. Now with basil, if you wanted to, you could let these go to flower if you were able to keep them short because basil flowers are edible, but I don't want mine to go to flower. So we're just gonna trim them off at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep trimming up all these basils. So I'll see you guys here in just a minute whenever I get over to the shiso. Just a minute. I just got done harvesting my first little batch of basil here because there's still a little bit at the back. But so far I'm at basically a quarter pound of just basil alone. And also the aroma in this room is heavenly. My hand smells like fruity, lemony basil, which is awesome. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move into the shiso part of this, which we're gonna take the weight for that as well. Um, I kinda wanna see what the shiso weighs is just alone. So we're gonna move over the basil and I'm gonna next do the shiso and then we'll add everything up for you guys. So with the shiso, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pick a low nob, no, I don't know why I keep saying nope. Maybe I'm like thinking noob, like video games, but anyways, low node, <laughs> and we're going to harvest from there. So, looks like, I'm going to start there because that is some good new growth. This one I'm going to do a little bit higher up. It smells really good. So, Shiso kind of has a, um, it's, to me, it it's kind of like a chocolatey, but uh, licorice aroma. Of course, that's my opinion. <laughs> it could be different to you, but it's really, really beautiful. So basically with this one, I'm trying to get all the big leaves because this is one that really blocks off light to the other plants. So I wanna make sure we get those out of there so everybody can be happy. She, sh she so likes to make it all about itself. And if you can too, with bigger plants like this, if you start to see it dipping down into the water like that, just go ahead and try to trim those back. You really wanna make sure you're taking care of your bottom leaves because um, those will start to decay. So we got new growth happening up here. We'll go ahead and cut it at this. 
So that's pretty good for my she. So I think I still have one hidden back there, but so far we are at about the same amount of, as basil, just off by a little bit. So almost a quarter pound again of another crop. So now we have like half a pound of basil and shiso mixed together, which is awesome. And it's time to move into my kale and my collards over here, which I'm super excited about because I want to saute them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start trimming these back and I'm just gonna add them onto my plate with my shiso. I don't need to divide that up. Pretty sure this is the one that if you've seen our post on, <laughs> on Instagram where CJ is in the space, space suit and he fell over, <laughs> um, this is the one that got damaged and somehow CJ didn't get damaged, so that's great. <laughs> so what I like about hydroponically grown collards and kales is that compared to stuff that you find at the stores, they don't have like a lot of dirt grit. And what I've noticed about our local stores is you'll tend to find within the leaves there's just all the eggs from things like uh, caterpillars and ladybugs. And sometimes you even get caterpillars that are still in there that got frozen and it's really gross to me. Um, so being able to grow them in a system like this just feels a lot cleaner. And it feels like I have more control, which I personally really like. Now I am moving into trimming back my kales and I'm just trimming off any ones that are blocking off any lights or the ones that are beginning to touch up here. I don't want those there. Okay, so I got a little bit on a roll and ended up harvesting the rest of this and did a little bit of cleanup here. So I just wanna talk about how much we actually got from this and it is quite a bit. So this is everything that we harvested just from the bottom shelf. And we have about a pound and a half all together, which is a ton of produce. Um, so as you can see, you can get very abundant uh, harvest from this. You have to make sure you just take care of it and constantly make sure you're trimming, make sure you're watering and everything else I talked to you guys about, which is really, really easy. So now I wanna talk a little bit about how you actually plant the system up and it's gonna be very brief. Um, if you're more curious about it, we do have another video where we show you how to build a more custom design for a flood and drain system. And in one of those videos, I do show you how to fully plant a system like this. But today I'm just gonna kind of briefly tell you guys about it. So bear with me. <laughs> So over here on this bottom shelf, now that we got everything trimmed back, you can see that there are these cubes that these plants are coming out of. Now this is a rock wool cube. They are very scratchy whenever you first touch them, so be careful when using this kind of uh, medium here. But they do a great job in letting these plants get a ton of water, which keeps them nice and healthy and happy. Now here in a second, I'll show you how I kind of do plant these. But for now, let's just kind of talk about this. So you got the plant and you got this beautiful root system coming all out of this into a mesh tray. We do like to use mesh trays and they have to be the two inch trays for the system or else it's not gonna work that well. And that just sits inside of this next tray here, which I actually can't lift this because the root structure is so incredibly entwined with each other that I don't want to destroy my plants here. But basically the roots come out of this, the plant grows up out of the top and it all goes into the system where it can sit in the water, absorbs that water through roots and keeps them nice and happy. So we get a lot of questions about how to plant up a system like this. And I just wanna briefly talk about that as well. So what I usually do is I will have a few of these two inch uh, bootstrap farmer trays that I'll use to actually house my rock wall cubes whenever I have them all prepped. So with these, you can buy them on Amazon. I'll go ahead and link it down below, but they come in many different sizes. Now these are the ones that are much smaller than the ones I have in this. And personally, I kind of like the smaller ones, but I was trying to use my big ones when we had them. So I didn't have time to use those. But they'll come in a sheet like this. And what you'll want to do is if you don't have a bucket big enough to fit this whole thing in there, just kind of break them in half a little bit and then put them in a bucket with pH balanced water that's in the 5.5 to 6.0 range. And you just let them kind of soak in that for a few minutes. And then after a few minutes have passed, you pull them out and you put them in a tray like this. And usually I have them all lined up like that because they fit perfectly in a tray. Then you would just want to plant these up with whatever seed that you are wanting to plant them with. And you would just take the seed and you put it in these little holes so that it already has in them. Once you have planted this all up, you can give it a little bit more water over the top. Make sure it's still that pH balanced water, but don't go too crazy because these are already wet enough to make that seed start to germinate. Next, you would take a humidity dome like this just place it over the top make sure the holes are slightly open you don't want it closed or you're going to get mold um, and then you would take that and just put it onto a shelf where you have a little bit of airflow and you would just 
check on that every so often and usually the water that it already has absorbed into the cubes is enough to keep it watered throughout most of the process unless you have some crops like say these uh, marigolds here that sometimes take a little bit longer to germinate if it does run out of water just give it a little bit more of that ph balanced water and you're good so once they have grown out of that what i'll do is as soon as i see a tiny little sprout coming up that's whenever i'll take whatever ones are sprouting out i'll put them into a different tray and under some light where they can grow just for a week or two until they start to get true leaf once they get true leaf i introduce them into the system and then that's basically it. At that point, I don't have to do anything and they just grow. <laughs> so something else I want to share with you guys is a little bit more about this system and two of the main components that really help these guys grow. So over here on this side, we do have some fans. Now this is to help push away that heat that's created from these lights. Now these lights are the T8 lights. They're a lot stronger because these are gonna be growing into adulthood compared to microgreens where we harvest them a lot sooner. Another thing about my particular system here is we are using some of these blurple lights. The reason because of that is because I do have plants that are flowering. That's why my flowering ones are up at the top where we have more of the purple light because they're going to need that more than my plants down here where I just don't really need them to flower. <laughs> Well, you guys, I am super happy that I finally got to show you guys how I harvest basically a pound and a half from this system every week and how easy it is to use a system like this. Now in the comment section down below, I will link a few of my favorite seed varieties that I have growing in here because we do get a lot of questions about which edible flowers they like. And there are a few that I particularly find to be my favorite because they are easier to grow in my opinion. <laughs> so we will link those down below. Um, if you have any questions or comments or anything else you want to know about the system, please let us know in the comment section down below too. Um, and be sure to check out that video that we have already on the system. I believe there's two parts to it. One is the whole setup process and the other one is it's just how to plant it, how to clean it, and things like that. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know in the comment section down below. And if you have a Facebook and an Instagram, they're both at On The Grow Farms and a website that is www.onthegrow.net where we actually have a brand new patent pending product. So be sure to check that out. And also our books are now in physical copies, guys. So that means you can hold becoming a microgreen master in your hands now. So be sure to check those out. Keep on believing and I'm going to enjoy this basil. <laughs>